last draw. No, so yeah, my next call in, I might as well just turn my call in and just say forget it. You know, but cause but, but cause that's for because it's for dub set. You know what I mean? Uh, or is it, well see by me having the weekends off, you uh -huh. know, uh if I had to, I would have. Like if I need if they say, all right, we need to be somewhere Friday. Right. Like, we need to be somewhere Friday, like four o'clock. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah. Right. But right. see, I'm not gonna put my job over the sack. You know, because right. I know where this is gonna take me and I know where my job is gonna to take go me. I feel like I'm in jail working with the job that I got at the airport. You know, I, my heart is always with Dub Sack. Right. So, you know, I don't I don't look at work. My, my job, you know, I'm ready to go. Exactly. So I'm ready to just went through this to crack. Actually I'm not waiting, I'm 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 helping it crack. Exactly. When you talk about image, uh, by me being in the, the music business less than two years, I can remember working with one of my first artists. Uh, all she wanted to do was go in the studio. Uh, she didn't want to spend any money on clothes. She didn't want to invest in herself. She didn't want to get her hair done. Um, and me being a, being a rookie, though I knew about Image, I wasn't 100% sure of what I needed to do to develop her image. So being in the position that I'm in now, uh, after talking to attorneys and uh, after meeting with artists, I decided I need to get the real lowdown on, on image. And I know in order to, to promote, you have to have something to promote, which is the image. So I decided to call up my people at Virgin Records, set up an interview with them. So um, I hope you're ready because you're about to get a heavy dose of information. We're going to Virgin Records, and I'll see you in a minute. You talked about the music as an A and R person. Do you look at the image of a new artist? I mean, because as an independent label, I think that uh, they may not focus on the image as much because they're looking at the music. As an A and R person, do you look at the image as well? It's important that the, the artist has something special about them. Um, not only for their sound, because um, there's a lot of people that can sing, and there's a lot of people that can rap, but you have to have something distinctive about your voice, as well as your look. It's, at least, even if they don't have it yet, to find something that's unique about them. Like, we'll just say Khalees, for instance. Um, beautiful girl. We have pictures of her. She's just a very attractive woman. But um, when she took it to the next level and did something more um, brighter with her hair, she, this little um, caterpillar became a butterfly. Do you, you understand what I'm exactly. saying? Yeah. Janet seems to always reinvent herself in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the kind of artists that we like to look for, someone a little bit left of center. Mm -hmm. You know, Lenny Kravitz, I mean, he's not like all the other rock musicians that you see out there. There's always something exciting about him, you know, to look at. He changes his hair. He changes his look. Um, maybe it's a new guitar right. that all of a sudden, like, wow, I've never seen a guitar like that before. Mm -hmm. Or a photo, a certain kind of photo that he likes to do all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And you can change your artist's imaging by, you know, the colors that you pick around them and maybe you want to do a, a campaign of strictly black and white. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a concept. It comes with the artist. So the image is important. Oh, yeah. You, and you have to make sure that your people that you surround yourself in marketing and so forth like that mm -hmm. get it. And, they, and if it's going to be an, a something of a brand new, really a striking visual campaign, your marketing people, whether it's indie or major, they, they have to have an understanding that, that they may have to reach the consumer or that audience a little sooner than the regular schedule way things go. They may have to figure a new way to get to that audience, whether it's through the internet or through its um, flyers or whether it's through... Um, more television ad campaigns, but maybe just do a sooner campaign, you know. Right. The mistakes that uh, independent labels make in promoting? I think um, one thing is, is that if you're going to be an independent label, there are enough people that have been in the industry um, that are out right now that there's no reason for you not to have somebody that at least consults you. I don't know if I'd let them write my checks you know, and spend all of my money. But the easiest way to learn is to deal with someone that has some experience. I mean, that's the one thing about it. All of us learn from being around people with experience. Mm -hmm. And too many times I see independent labels say, well, it should be this way, 
or it should be that way. Right. And, and I spent money on this, and I'm two hundred thousand um, dollars into this into this record, and I haven't seen a dime. I tell anybody that does a, um, an independent label, you have to be willing to take your life savings and put it in the middle of 405 in the street, put lighter fluid on it, and throw a match to it and burn it up because that's the same thing that could happen to you in the record business. And I think independents go into it and they just know that they got a good record. But what is the marketplace demanding? Exactly. You know, what is happening on the street? What are the kids into? Because you're primarily dominated by 12 plus numbers. Kids from anywhere between 12 and some of the young adults, which are 25, drive majority of the record sales. Mm -hmm. And when you see them get above 35, their buying habits change. Their listening habits change. Mm -hmm. You know, they got families. So to bet your life savings on somebody that's 12 to 13 years old, <laughs> 18 years old, I mean, you, you, you know, it's like any business model. I mean, that's a consumer, that's a moving target. So I think that a lot of times when, when people do the record business, you know, unlike a lot of other businesses, they can go do a strategic business plan, get money, and that if they follow that business plan and get lucky, they can make money. But in the record business, you could have all of the plan down and a horrible record, and you could, it could be disaster, or several horrible records. I think a lot of independent um, labels don't know when to get out. Right there? Uh-huh. That's Dub Sack. We're just trying to get y'all feeling about this. That's why we asked him to play it. We're we doing a little documentary on our, on our label. Let me, let me listen. You got to hold the mic a little closer. To your mouth. You got to get your name. Here, dude. My name is Kim. Kim. I'm from L.A. That's right. That's kind of banky, though. Like yeah. that Gardena, baby. When I pull out that Gardena, going out in them streets, baby. I like to hear that. Oh, that he got, he got yeah, he, he, he check that out. He, yeah, I got one in my pocket. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? What you think about it, bro? I ain't heard shit, homie. Yeah. That's this shit right there? Yeah, this shit right here. Hey. Hey. What you think? I think it's great. I like it. It's like this real relaxed smoke to the music. I can just respect, relax, smoke me a blunt, call it today. Is it something that you uh, bump in your ride? Almost definitely. Bump in the ride, the house, when I'm out and about at the park. Well, you should definitely be at the uh, Dub Sack function. You got a car, right? They got your car? Hey, check it out. Look at the website. The website off the hooks. Y'all okay. see, see the, uh, the, CD, uh, the, uh, the CD inside the sack? If you go to the website, it'd be in the sack. It'd be a real CD, though. And it's spinning in the sack. It's smoke coming out. You see the Dub Sack bouncing. And you get to here. So check out the... I'm a star. I'm a star. Mr. Suspect, a war veteran and father, is a one-man show. He writes, produces, performs, and is also the CEO of Spectacular Records. Hey, we normal people just like you. We got family. That's right. We got mothers, we got fathers that we trying to feed. That's right. You know what I mean? So why don't you, why don't you, why don't you talk about your daughter, you know, maybe oh, say yeah, what's man. up, That's you know, right, give her some love. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my daughter for sure and uh, definitely her mother, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's real. I want to give a shout out to Sean, you know, because um, she's been a big support, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it's we've been hustling with this music. It's times that I can't do what I want to do. First and foremost, I can't be there in the physical, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I can't be there in person. So. I mean, even when it's times that, you know what I'm saying, I'm hustling, to, you know, to get studio time or I'm hustling, you know what I'm saying, to shoot a video or something, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. since I don't have that major label support, right. you know what I mean, it's right. coming out of my pockets, you know, exactly. I'm missing meals, you know, yeah. and you know, I guess you got to give a shout out, man, because she ain't never tripped on me one time, you know what I mean, exactly. that says a lot about her as a person, you know, that's right. That's part of that family that I'm speaking of, too, you know. Exactly, that's, so. that's, uh. That's just when you know you got somebody in your corner from yeah, start man. to finish, That's you know real. what I mean? That's real. Would you do you feel like you should have signed with a major or you feel like going independent was was the best thing for for spectacular? Uh, by all means, man. Spectacular Records, Independence, that's what it's all about. That's what this family I'm speaking of is all about, you know. I could have signed with two majors, you know, right. already. And some, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, big name independence is that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But um it's all about independency for me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a soldier for real. You know That's what I mean? right. Yeah. I want to get out there and do it for myself. You know what I mean? That way I know what's got to take place, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and it's going down just the way we planned it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Following. <laughs> that you really, really don't want to do and you don't want to be involved in, then you'll never have time to do. Like, for example, um, right now I'm dealing with, um, for example, some of the guys over at Dubsack, and part of the problem is, you know, they're working two jobs, you right. know, doing factory stuff and blue-collar, hard labor type stuff, and they also want to run a record label. And I recognize, um, you know, 